But when you realized there was some problems in signing up for that. Right? <laughs> and we go with privilege of the floor, Bill. I'm just here to uh, see what's going on here in the discussion relative to Golden Heights Road. Golden we Heights Road. That and yep. spent a bunch of time researching. Okay. Okay. Do you want to so skip we'll down? Yeah, uh, skip sure, down if you want to go to it. Might sure. as well. Yep. Might as well. Golden Heights Road. Okay, so as I said in the memo, Jim and I met with, uh, with Bill um, and reviewed the paperwork as you had asked us to do at the last meeting. Um, there was a subdivider improvement agreement for all of the Moose Run subdivision, which included the Golden Heights Road and, and Lost Pass Road and Drakes Brook, all of that, plus the water and sewer. There was a bond for a million two eighty three that was taken out at, at the time of the SIA was signed. Um, they did the project. We reviewed it. Um, the subdivider improvement agreement was entered in November 12, 2004. And after the installation of the utilities and the paving of the road were completed, uh, November 28, 2005, was when I had written a letter to Bill saying that that the project was considered complete and we started a two-year warranty period mm -hmm. which went through November 28, 2007. Mm -hmm. um, the road Bill has um, compaction testing for the water sewer lines in the road that show that it was compacted. Um, it was built to the existing specifications at the time as far as the width of the road, the shoulders, the, dr the ditches, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, the compaction test said that they met the, um, the requirements uh, at that time. Um, Bill Cheney and Tim Kingston, we have sign-offs from them for the installation of the utilities and the backfilling uh, for all of that. Um, we have uh, the actual plans uh, as built are on file with the town, so we have all of the information that we required by the agreement. Mm -hmm. um, We've done the test pits, and it's difficult to tell um, what exactly was put in there, but there is evidence of gravel. So, I mean, between that and the compaction tests, we don't have any reason to believe that uh, substandard materials were used. Mm -hmm. um, the settling, uh, some of the settling on the road, uh, it's, it is pretty evident that that occurred when utilities up above were built. Um, and then we think that the water is passing through the sewer uh, and water line trenches where they were put in um, because they would have been put in with stone in them. Mm -hmm. um, there is n there are no under drains. Uh, they were not part of the the original design, and I think that's that's something that we would have to do, right? Well, we or did you find anything about under drainage in Moose Run? I spent eighteen thousand seven hundred dollars on under drains. Okay, that's so a lot of under drains. Yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, they didn't show up on any of the as builts. Right. So we don't know where they are, and to they a degree, not our a, a lot of the ditches are silted in. So, I mean, we'd be lucky to go out there and find any of them. I think, I, you know, but you know, the under drains. That, I mean, you paid for them. I paid to put them in. <laughs> They, so are, the, they are not on the as builds. So I'm not sure I understood what you just said, Mark. Try that again. About uh, the, well, the, the, that you think what caused the problem in the road is something with recent construction or? The construction up above 
What's up above? The house uh, that's going the house, Well, there are several houses up there where drainage would come down right. towards Golden Heights Road. Right, and there's one under construction now. Right? And there's one under construction, but there are two others above, above that. Above that were intended to drain down well, in that area. Well, they will naturally drain down in that okay. area. There Go were ahead. water and sewer line extensions that were put up to those houses. Right, in and order there to can get them be connected. Water that's right, and there can be water that could be flowing in that, in those trenches, that could could come in because there's a manhole at the end of Golden Heights Road where the turn goes into Moose Crossing. There's a manhole there. Um, we could be getting some infiltration through the through the um, where the trenches were put in mm -hmm. for that water and sewer. That, that's one possibility that we talked to Dana about um, when they were up there doing the, the uh, test pits. So it's unclear then as to why the road failed. It, it is. It is. Um, we, it was built to what our requirements were at the time. Have our requirements changed since then? Um, not, no, they haven't. I mean, we've required the same depth with the same crushed stone, um, bank, bank run gravel. Those depths have not changed since the late 1990s. So um, now whether or not- So one, one of the dilemmas becomes, if we go fix the road, we have no assurance that this won't happen all over again. Well, so I don't even you, know what, what, did it, what, what well, would we fix? Well. Do you want to explain what you would do to the road now? Well, what I would do is uh, just like what we are going to be doing at Noon Peak, uh, and, and what we did up above there is that uh, we would um, remove the asphalt, box, if you will, box the road out down 21 inches. We would install um, under drains if they do not exist, probably to a depth of around four feet. Um, water table seems at the time we dug the uh, the test bits the water table was between you know 36 and 42 inches at that at, in depth um, so we would try to uh, pick up any um, water that would be in the road if indeed we'd investigate to see that if um, water was actually flowing down the trench line of the sewer um, and it, it seems that that, that could be a, uh, a pretty good guess because of the, uh, that particular structure or that particular manhole has been problematic since I've been here. So over the last few years, it does, it does like to move. Um, so I would assume that, uh, that there is an issue there and if we can intercept some of the, uh, that water above that um, structure, and incorporate that into the under drains, that with the addition of road stabilization fabric, you know, and the road a reasonable fit. The road, the fabric is is the is probably the only thing that you didn't put fabric in there, did you? No. Um, and that is something that we've done on Noon Peak that helped the upper section of it. Yeah. Um, and we just started using that in the last couple of years. How long is the years. repair? Is, uh, how long has the upper section of Noon Peak been down now? Uh, for four years, three years. Is it four? Three years. Three, three years? Yeah. Okay. Could, well, I mean, uh, you know, did, did you show him Tom Myrick's email? To Bill? Yeah. Um, no, I, no. I didn't. Okay. Tom Myrick sent an email mm -hmm. and, and he made some observations. He said, first of all, it was his memory that a similar thing happened on Moose Run before the town took it over. There was a whole section of the road that failed. And the determination was made that, pipe, that first of all, the materials, the, the nature of the, the materials that go up that hill are not the easiest thing in the world to put roads down on. They tend, you know, there's a lot, of, I think it's a lot of big rocks and boulders and stuff. And they tend to move. And, uh, um, and, and that's what caused the moose run. Does that ring a bell at all? Well, as I went through, literally, yeah. <laughs> Mark and Jim's home, yeah. this much documentation, I did find the stuff about the problem that existed in moose run. Right. And 
that was a was the the failure over there was a ditch line where the wrong size rock was used to line the ditch. Okay. And that. That was the fault of uh, Proven and Lober, their specification. Okay. And th there's a con there's some confusion about drainage spec, and I, you might know more about it than I do. But you got to go to two different places. But and that's different than what's happening here. It's got nothing to do with the road unless it eroded all back. This was on the inside of the curve after Drake's Brook Road. Is, right. Is where the failure was. And I paid Piper to come back and put the right stone right. in that ditch yeah. afterwards. Yeah. My recollection of all the mass excavation on that road, I, there was not a lot of rock. There was no blasting. I don't believe there was unsuitable material. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'd be careful. I'm not saying it's unsuitable. I'm just, I'm back to if we fix this thing, how do we know what to do? Right. You know, that's the struggle. I'm, you know, yeah. I mean, I hear all of this, but but n no one's saying, oh, yeah, if you do this, I guarantee you that it's not going to be a problem again in four years. Well, so yeah. maybe the trick is to wait to see where the noon peak holds together. The, the, <laughs> there's obviously water infiltration. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. Why, uh, you know, why or why it's not getting drained out, I don't know. The, the things I would add to what Mark says, we I found the sieve analysis for all the gravel yeah, that did. went in there. Yeah. The, all right. the gravel met, met specification. And then the, the maybe the most interesting thing I found was the contract with Piper paid him for unsuitable material. So if he's doing the gross excavation for the road at the very beginning of roughing in the road, right. If you find <coughs> material that's got clay in it, or it's got organics in it, or what else? Um, probably large rock near. Or large rock near. Yeah, great. The, my contract with Piper authorized him to remove all of that. Right. And bring in the right kind of material. And indeed, in Drake's Brook Road, I paid $6,800 for unsuitable material. And Jim knows Dick Piper real well. He's a friend of mine. I can guarantee you that if there was unsuitable material on Golden Heights Road, Dick would have taken it out there and put another material in because that's how he makes his money. And so I'm absolutely confident that that isn't it. And you didn't pay him anything for Golden Heights Road is what you're saying. For unsuitable. There, there for was, unsuitables. There was no unsuitable material right. on Golden Heights so. Road. The interesting thing is your specifications or the specifications that you refer to in sewer lines require uh, the contractor to put in what amounts to a dam around the sewer pipe, mm -hmm. but it only relates to uh, a certain pitch. Uh, right. And I don't know what that pitch is, but I know that Golden Heights doesn't achieve that, that pitch. But um, I think one of the, if I was asking a question if there might be a, a mm -hmm. spec that needs to be changed, maybe you need those dams around the sewer lines in the trench even when the when the pitch when is the roads flatter given that we get a lot of water you know well I mean, we do yeah we all right. have yeah. more water than we'd all like to deal with there's a lot of a lot of surface water that flows up there at various times oh, yeah. of the year so yeah because I, I was reminded again and i i haven't looked up there somebody said that even right now there is uh, who's ever someone's building a house there's a house under construction up on Golden Heights. There is. And that there's a lot of, like, you know, silt and the rest that's run down off of that construction into that trench. Now, oh, yeah. there's yeah. another question. Uh, did, uh, is the homeowner going to fix that? Yeah. That, well, that the belongs, contractors. That belongs to the, to the homeowner. But we would, we would, before we give them occupancy, we will yes. have the contractor go back and clean that up. He's already talked to the contractor. Okay. Yeah. All right. One of the things on that that everybody might have forgotten was when the town took over the roads yeah. at both Cascade Ridge and Moose Run, the Homeowners Association had a provision or regulation or something that allowed us to collect, I forget if it was 500 or or $1,000 from the homeowners, which was a road, uh, road uh, protection 
amount of money, but when they gave us that money, they also signed a document that said that they recognized that they were responsible for damage to roads and, and ditches as a result of their construction. And when we transferred, when we conveyed the roads to the town, we conveyed that right mm -hmm. to the town. That might be an administrative pain in the butt, and you may have that, that right in any event, but it certainly helped when we got a thousand dollars from a homeowner right. and they signed something saying they knew they were responsible for road damage because they you know they're all then then the contractor knows he's he's in in line for that so okay I'll check on that provision mm -hmm. and see what we can well make I it as it part my of a building permit you know, I you know originally what we talked about was that this you know obviously this road is going to have to get on a list of that and other roads, all mm -hmm. of them tending to run up on that side, right. that are in a and we ought to we ought to kind of rank them because I know you know now this one we're not going to do for a while because we're concerned they're going to build condos up in there. Well, so the, until the condos get built, you know I don't you know I don't think we want to go messing around with it. Now I don't know whether they're going to go ahead and build those or not. I it was under. I've heard definitely yes, and then I've heard eh, maybe not. <laughs> so I don't the know. It's approved. I know that he got. I know he got his. He got it approved, but uh, I don't know whether he plans to do anything. Still don't have a building permit. So he hasn't come and asked he for a building in, permit. Well, he came in last week and talked to Mary. Right. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Al Ward. Al Ward. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. He came in last week to talk to Mary. I don't know if he took a form with him or if he was just gathering info. But hmm. I know he's. They're getting. They're potentially getting closer from what he said. Well, at, at some point, I think we need to make a list of all the roads uh, that you know have got serious deterioration that are going to need some attention, and and you and give us your best in game prioritization. Which of these is the most important to go to work on? Because we're going to have to get some money to do it, and um, I don't think we're going to do all of these at once. Right. Yeah. North Country Council worked with Tech Transfer on the yeah. software, and it's ready. We've been, we've been the, waiting. There's an evaluation software that we've been waiting for. Wow. And North Country Council, our regional planning commission, mm -hmm. just finished working with um, UNH to finish that. So we could have them, they've offered to come into towns, so. Well, I do know from walking up now, I always get the wrong names up there, not Greeley, but the, what's the main road that runs all the way up to the- Snows Mountain Road. Snows Mountain Road. Mm -hmm. There are sections of that that yeah. have really deteriorated. I mean, they're down to dirt. Well, that, that um, was because of the cuts we've made on the water repairs. Well, yeah. regardless no, of the reason, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. that's what they are. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're, and they're, they're a couple of the bends are really all broken up and mm -hmm. pretty much they're in, finished. They're in bad shape. Yeah, okay. So you'll go ahead and do that? Yeah, that's been on the list. We've been waiting for that particular software. It would be nice before we go ahead and do this to try to figure out why we're having such a problem. I, I, I um, appreciate your input on them. Maybe we ought to change the spec on the sewer lines mm -hmm. to require... Could be something else. I'm not an engineer. No. I just can't figure out any other reason why you'd have that problem. There, there no, I mean it looks like, it just looks like material shifted, but the question is why? It doesn't. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, so I'm not so a... I, I mean, it's water. In it's water. In you think it's water is I washing it, something water, away that caused it to uh, Lots of times when you get alligator cracking, it's a telltale sign of, uh, you know, a water issue. The, the and I really think that it has something to do with the construction above, and it's just changed some paths, water paths, and we're just getting more water in there than we thought we would. Well, I, uh, y construction in the sense that we're, you know, we're taking what was previously pervious material and making some, in you're saying runoff, additional runoff? Yeah, I, I, I mean, there have been, there were three or four houses above Golden Heights Road. When you look up the hill, where the landscaping has changed, where we've put in driveways, where the houses themselves, 
you know, you could have runoff off of roofs. You could have runoff off the driveways. I mean, I, who knows? The water lines, sewer lines that we put up in there. There could be a whole, I think all of these things have kind of multiplied as you look at it. It just seems to me that we changed the water that's coming. Could we find a, um, a wizard who could come in and take a look at this and tell us, oh, this is what your problem was? An engineer or a ditch wizard? Uh, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Somebody who knows no, what they're talking I think, about. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think we can. I think we can. We I, can think we, I think we ought to do it. Look at I think we ought to do it because if we're continuing as we build homes, if we've got right. to change, if we've got to be more careful about the runoff coming mm -hmm. down, now's the time to get those rules in place. So well, I think taking each home at a time, you know, the calculation, the water probably is not coming off any quicker than it was or whatever. But I think when you put them all together, it, it just, you know, it could all be coming into that one area above well, Golden it was Heights. all, I Who thought knows? it was originally that all of that was designed to go down to that pond, right? Next to the golf course? No, no. no. This is, uh, I mean, all of the water from the uh, Lost Pass side goes yes. into the pond. Okay. The, the, uh, all the water from that, from that uh, Golden Heights side goes down and I'll runs to through that up. ditch in the old part but of the I golf course. But I thought the gold, yeah. I it goes into Corcoran Pond. It goes into Corcoran Pond. The, um, I had always thought that the houses that were, that basically there weren't any houses up on Golden Heights Road other than the ones that were, did you, can, these are houses you can also get to by Flat going out Moose Run? Flat Mountain. Yeah, the yeah. Flat Mountain drains that, yeah. some of it drain, drains that, end that of it, way. The end of it. Some of it right. definitely drains that right. way. Um, and, but, well, that, I mean, the, let me, can I talk a minute about maintenance? Because I've never been yeah. bashful about telling you that I think that the, the maintenance is bad. First of all, um, the, there's, a, there's a treatment swale um, between um, uh, Golden Heights Road and where the water goes underneath the, the road and ends up going in that golf course ditch down into Corcoran's Pond. You know, my suspicion is that ditch has never been cleaned out. It's probably full of sand and silt from that house construction that's going on right now. But the two things that contribute to the problem, and I'm not saying they caused this problem right. at all. In fact, I'd probably bet that they didn't cause this problem. But if you don't maintain ditches, and there are under drains that were put in there properly, and somewhere out there there's $18,000 worth of under drains, <laughs> If you don't maintain those ditches, the ends of the drains get plugged up, and they right. don't work. Right. And I don't think the, any of those ditches have ever been maintained. The, the second thing that happens is on the right next to the uh, paved surface, there's a 24-inch gravel shoulder. And if you don't grade those shoulders every couple of years, they call them pulling the ditches, they pull the gravel back up to the edge of the shoulders and roll them and, and com compact it, the water runs off the pavement and it'll cut a ditch in the shoulder. So now all the water runs down right next to the shoulder, on the shoulder, and doesn't go in the ditch. And it'll, if you go up there and you go a lot, a lot of places in town, you'll find the pavement goes like this, then there's a ditch, it comes up what's left of the shoulder, and then it goes down into the ditch. That when you wash those things out, that's more gravel that finally ends up in the in the in the uh, the real ditch, and that will introduce some water infiltration, I think, into the roadbed, and it'll weaken the edges of the pavement. There are lots of places in town where you'll find the yeah, edges where of the it's pavement cracking the edges are just gone. It. It's broken right away, yeah. and it's because the shoulder has eroded. So that's my current pitch on it. You know. Not, not doing basic maintenance to the roads every year is a, is a uh, it, it's not cost effective. Well, I would, uh, I would ask you to, to, to take that input and give us your 
Okay. Recommendations as to what, you know, what I, I, I'm, I'm totally unaware. I mm -hmm. mean, if we need to hire somebody to do that kind of maintenance, we ought to be doing that. Okay. If, if you drive from the Waterville Valley Realty Building down to Triple I Road, yeah. um, and, and coming, coming this way and look on the right, you'll see how that, exactly that has happened on the side of the road. And as you come down to the intersection, this ditch that the water's made gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you get down to the clo closer to the intersection, the pavement's just breaking off. And that, that happens in a lot of places. And that's a pain in the butt to try to fix. Um, a lot of places don't address it. But it's a false economy, in my opinion, not to be maintaining ditches, culverts, and shoulders. Okay. okay. Sorry, right. but you guys have heard my song. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm thank just, you for your just, input. Uh, yep. just yeah. to trying to understand work. what we need to do. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. On to the next subject. Uh, right. right. Shall we go to uh, approval of minutes on yeah. the April 13th? Thank you for your time, and I appreciate your concern. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. All right. Good Line thank 31. You, uh, in the minutes, line 31, I think we should um, delete, let me see if I can find line 31. Um, it, it, the, 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 after the parentheses, just end of winter maintenance period, the overtime budget, it, it's just hanging out there and it doesn't make any sense. I know what they were talking about, but it's fine to just say that... Uh, um, also underspent is the highway department for a winter maintenance period, okay? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and on line 182, I would, 182, I would recommend, it's talking about the Tiger Grant. Mm -hmm. It's not obvious from reading this. This was the Tiger Grant for, what was it, town beautification or something? I don't know what it No, but it's a transportation it, it, was, it was the signs. For the signs. Yeah. yeah. So make a statement that it's the Tiger Grant for signs was not approved because somebody reading oh, this would have no clue. It's the Our Town Grant for signs. It's not, it, she shouldn't have put Tiger. It should be Our then, Town. Then, oh, then get okay. rid of Tiger yeah. and add the Our Town Our Grant Town. for signs yes. was not approved. Got it. Um, that, that same line has a typo. Further that no one from right. NH has been yeah. approved. Yeah. Anything else, Bill? No. Those are the two changes I had. Other than that, okay. do you have any others? No. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. <coughs> I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Financial update, Mark? Yep. You have the report uh, in your packet. Um, we're, doing, we're doing well um, for all of the departments. Um, nothing right now is is out of variance um, for this point in the year. Um, we are continuing public safety wise. Um, again, we're we're slightly ahead of budget. I don't know if if that is basically front loaded. It's it's all ambulance um, money uh, that we're ahead revenues. Yeah. On the revenue yeah, side, the it's winter. still it's still fifty six percent, and we're only thirty three percent through the year. So um, that that remains ahead. I don't know if by the end of the year we'll be catching up, um, but I assume we are. Uh, on the expenditure side, um, since the last report, there's really no change in any of the departments. Um, Brooke is on vacation this week because it's a school vacation week and they're redoing the floor mm -hmm. in the gym and she can't be in her office this week. But I did want to just point out to you um, on her revenues, yeah. she's currently at 13.4%. Last year at this time she was at 10.5% collected. Um, and on the expense side she's at 19.9% and last year she was at 23.2. So on both sides of the budget, she's doing better okay. than last year, so. Good. Great. Um, any other questions, any lines? I had no questions. Okay. No. That's it. 
Okay. Uh, department head updates. Chris? Hello. Um, you'll see why the uh, ambulance revenues are going to start going down away. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, the, the law there for activity from. <laughs> Nobody's riding the ambulance, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Activity from, I believe it's, yes, March 30th for today. Um, so that's starting to quiet down a little bit. So what is a building check? The building check is um, the guys, um, usually it's the, the second shift into the evening, um, usually 10, 11 o'clock at night, they go around to all the businesses and- Oh, okay. And all right, sure gotcha. Is, so that's what those are. And they log every, every one they do. Fine. Um, and it's usually, those aren't just the checks, those are when they find something. So oh. those are basically open doors. Gotcha. That they mm -hmm. find. <laughs> Believe it or not. Well, um, they do that if you tell them you're going out of town, too. They'll go around to your house right. and check to make sure all your doors yeah, are locked. Yes, I know, I know that. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, Engine 2 is in its second week of being um, repaired down in Cooksit. Um, we should have that back in another week or two, which will be good. Um, other than that, um, that's about all that's going on. We're okay. getting ready for summer, and then there's a few events. Dave's uh, fishing working. Derby, Dave's fishing. working the bike race right now. Coming oh, that's right. There's a bike race this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's still snow on the ground. That's <laughs> um, well, it's not snow on the road, right? That's right. So um, all's, all's going well. Great. Thanks. Great. Chris. Terrific. Yes, Jim. And we have our new tractor. I you saw do. It. It's I a grass grower. <laughs> uh, can't find the grass. Can unfortunately, it? it didn't come with a plow. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> but it is here. So. All right. Um, other than that, the uh, garbage truck has uh, left town and is uh, at its place of repair. Hopefully, less than two weeks. But uh, the truck went in uh, Monday. So. Hopefully he can get it done in less than two. If if not, we've scheduled two weeks and we've got two weeks of coverage okay. from Witcher. So, yeah. so uh, kind of related to um, it, did the bids, the request for bids, go out for the water lines? No, I know in the last not. they have not. They when have when not. are they scheduled? They I originally yeah. were talking okay. about the beginning 24th. of the week or something. Yeah. They were supposed to go out by. Um, the 24th on Sunday. Right. It looks like they're going to be going out the um, 8th of May now. Joe Ducharme has been in touch with Rural Development and uh, the state um, DES uh, to make sure that we can get their approvals so that we can send those out by May 8th. That's what he's targeting right now. He also <clears throat> has talked to Rural Development um, because we're bumping up against the September 30th deadline. Yeah. Um, they are talking to Washington, D.C. right now to see if uh, that can be extended into October um, because we don't have the plans out. And they require the 30-day... Um, review period. Review period and the 30-day bid announcements. So we... The folks from so New it, Hampshire. So, so is it 30 days for them to review, and then 30 days after that, you have to allow people a chance to, to come bid. in? To bid. So the bid period has to be 30 the days. The bid period has to be 30 days, yes. and then once we accept one, they reserve 30 days more? No, no, no. Oh. They, we What's can their 30 start days right for? away. Oh, we their can. 30 days is prior to the bids actually going out. They have shortened that down. They've been talking to Joe. He's been submitting plans to them piecemeal, so they will not need their full 30 days, they've already told him, to turn those plans around, give us approval to bid. Once the bids go out, we'll, we'll need 30 days for the bid period, and then we'll So be it's able, gonna be June now. It'll be June. We Mm -hmm. Before we are yep. able to, do they, do they, when the people bid, this. do they know that there's a date they must finish construction? Yes, by? it's in the bid document. Okay, that's right. Is that going to scare people away? 
Um, it depends, not really. I mean, okay. the work that we have to do um, probably is just 60, maybe 90 days worth of work. Um, it's not extensive work. The trenching, you know, the major part of the trenching is all done. They're, they're basically doing the connections now. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, pouring some concrete in place. So I, I don't think my problem is getting all of the requests for payments done, getting that turned around and getting the payments by rural development back to us. Because I don't want to have a contract and have only half of the payments done and get to September 30th. Do they, so do they pay the contractor directly or do they pay no, us? No, it's a reimbursement. We pay the contractor and they reimburse us the money. So that's why I've told Joe, unless we get something in writing that rural development will extend beyond payments back to us beyond the September 30th, then I, you know, we'll have to see where we are. Because oh, oh okay. Time, so, yeah. so even if the work gets done by September yeah. 30th, it's not a question. Of the, they right. cut off payments at a certain point. Well, that's see, their fiscal year ends on September 30th. Aye, aye, aye. So, if we can get it in writing from them that they will reimburse us after the September 30th time, then we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. The next big cutoff would be December 31st because I don't want to go into another mm -hmm. fiscal year. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to get this cleaned right. up. Right. Do we run any risk that people will not bid because they don't have the capacity with some of these delays that we have? As far as from the timing standpoint? Yeah. I think yeah I think you take guys like maybe Dana White out of the mix. Um, you know depending on what his other job load is. Um, but a company like Hiltz or other big contractors, they're, I mean, they have crews, they, they're not mm -hmm. really affected. I mean, uh, yeah, somebody like Hiltz would be able to get it. I mean, you, you get somebody like Dana, who's just got, uh, you know, one truck, and then they'd have yeah, to right. hire, hire right. trucks, you know, right. that type of thing, right. or hired equipment, rented mm -hmm. equipment. Mm -hmm. He'd, he'd have a timing issue, but I, I don't see a firm like Hiltz being bothered too much by it. I mean, and that's the other problem is getting all, like we have electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, everybody's, Joe's trying to coordinate several different disciplines. We're a very small project compared to other stuff that they're working on, so we don't have everyone's undivided attention. Mm -hmm. And that's been the frustration is he can't get the information back to finish the plans to get them reviewed. And I've told him that it, we need, somebody needs to move on this now because we're, we've been talking about it since January. It's ridiculous. What's the, what's the worst case if we can't get the extension. And well, we will not, I don't think that we should sign any contracts or agree to anything that would put the town at risk of not getting the grant money back. We should only enter a contract on work we know we can get done by say September 1 so that we would have 30 days to clean up all of the paperwork because I, I don't want to have you know us front money out there that we then don't get back right and if we if we are able to enter into a contract that has them done by September 1st does that give you enough that time? gives us enough that we 30 days would be enough to get to get that paperwork cleaned up and and the but again, that's, that's just and the reimbursement from. The oh yeah, we, we would get the reim. No, okay. they're they're basically reimbursing us right now every every seven to ten days from the time they get the signed paperwork 
in the office in North Conway, mm -hmm. we have a check or a deposit because it's electronically deposited. Mm -hmm. Within seven to 10 days, we're getting the money. So mm -hmm. a month would be fine enough time to clean everything up. Okay. But I don't know what people can guarantee us they can get done by September 1. And this is all only if Washington were to come back and say, no, we're not going to give you a penny mm -hmm. after September 30th. Mm -hmm. If they'll give us something in writing that says, if you've done the work by September 30, then you know, doing the paperwork and getting that cleaned up is fine. If we can get that in writing, then we're good to go. Yeah. Getting anything from writing in the federal government is a well, the, 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 people, challenge. I the mean, people in North Conway, the Rural Development Office in North Conway, says this is your grant money. You, you do the work, get it done, you'll be able to use it. It's whether or not the Washington office approves that. So we've got the support of the people here, the regional mm -hmm. office. It's whether or not we can we can get the national office to to say yes. So I know the people that are presenting it to Washington are saying we need to do this. Mm -hmm. And because they see, because Joe gives them updates and he, he's been submitting work to them, so they know he's working on it. And, and there, there are several bits of stuff here that had to be done in this last phase of the mm -hmm. project. Um, and, and part of it was an upgrade of the the, the treatment plant, you know, and the move right. and the upgrade. And yeah. I'm, my my guess would be that was that was a lot of the work. That is that. that is probably sixty or seventy percent of the work. Yes, it, is it's there, the majority it, of the work. It, is that is there anything like that that's holding this up? I mean, the thing that would be incredibly embarrassing, embarrassing. I mean, they mm -hmm. just shoot us. I know. Is if we don't get the well They'll started. shoot me first. I know. Believe me. I mean, I we have to get the well now. going. Uh, I, I know. We we will we will get that well. We'll be servicing our system in some way before this is over. I guarantee you that. We will get that. Now, how we're treating the water, I I can't guarantee right. you that we'll get that building built the building way that we built, want and but, all that. But we could, if worst comes will, to worst, reconnect. We could we connect will the re well to the old system, we old plumbing. Yes, that will be done before September. I that I guarantee you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We scary. may be losing. Yeah, it well, is we, scary. We, it's yeah. very scary. Well, me. you know, all the things are aligned against you. This is an I election know. year, I so know. people yeah. in Washington are, uh, you know, which budget? Da da da. You know, are they going to actually do? It depend. I, you know, it, it's all hypothetical, but I right. can see them using it as an issue of, well, we sympathize with you, but we can't sign a letter. Right. You know. I know. Well, I I would not recommend to you. That we enter any contract that we how are we going to enter into a contract if we can't get the money from them we don't have a legal authority do we did we appropriate the fund uh, the, well, the original no, warren article yeah. allows us to spend this money yes so from a warrant article perspective yes. it's just that we don't know where to get the money from that's correct because the funding sources part of the funding sources was the grant Right, and and so, but but let me let me let me let me yeah, let's explore sure, this sure. If, mm -hmm. if because I'm not so sure yeah. that we just don't want to move ahead. I'm not sure that even if they say no, we might have to go cry poor uncle. Um, mm -hmm. Let's suppose we do the work. They they say no, don't sign the letter, but we sign the contract anyway. Mm -hmm. So we go ahead and get the work done. Where where would we do we have authority to borrow any money or anything? I I don't think we do. Do we? Um, Can we write a bond to cover that? If we no, had to. No. No. Based on what bond council said last November or November of fourteen, when we closed on the loan, we have used up all of our bonding authority. 
the funding source was the grant. Right. Yeah. So we could <coughs> go try to get another grant. Which well, you can accept, but yeah. no, I'm just saying. Yeah, I hear that, you. You know, it, you, but we do not have authority to bond anything else. We have, we have oh, borrowed geez. all we can borrow. All right. all right. Well, obviously, this is the most important thing to work on. Yes. <laughs> I call Joe. I mean, all other things day. are irrelevant. I mean, uh, is there anything Joe needs from us? I mean, do we need to? You know, I mean. No, but um, if. If Joe has not finished the plans by Friday, I'm going to call the, one of the principals at CMA, and I'm going to talk to Joe's boss. Yeah, I, we're running out of time. And if yeah. they've got to simplify it, then simplify it. Right. I mean, you know, I, you know, if they're waiting for something and they can't get it, you know, we, but, but to not get the well connected is just incredible. I no, mean, the, the well will I mean, get. that's out of all of this, that's the one thing that really matters. Well, we can <laughs> treat the water from well four by bringing it into well house two yeah. and connecting it to the existing system. Right. If we have to. Right. We don't want to do that, but if right. we have to, we can. We will do that. Right. If point. we have to, that that's, you know, if we're waiting for engineering because we're not sure of how to design this thing that's or right. blah, blah, yeah. blah. Then just 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 yeah. get the simple one done. We'll worry. Maybe we'll go apply for another grant. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll yeah. worry about it at that time. Yeah. But by the next meeting, I'll have an answer. All right. Well, let us know as soon as yep. you hear. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Hmm. Okay. North. Point. Now I had one other thing. Yeah. DES was supposed to have sent us a letter back. They have not. Good. I, right. I also had another department head thing from the rec department. She's continuing with her hiring for the summer staff. Right. She's uh, probably over halfway, probably three quarters of the way through her hiring. Um, and I think she has everybody identified. Um, the last thing she told me was she was just waiting to hear back from a couple of folks. So she's already selected everybody. Okay. Most of them are returning. Um, maybe not to the, the same job, but they're returning to the staff, so that's good. Um, and then from administration, last week we did our office cleanup. Um, we were able to do some reorganization upstairs, um, purged what files we could. Uh, we put the new server in place. As you know, our server died. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned that at the last meeting. Um, but the new server is there, um, and a new backup will be finished uh, tomorrow. Um, one issue that, as we were looking at the files upstairs, we're, we're getting more and more hard copy files. Um, there are some that we're able to purge, but there are some that we have to keep permanently. All of our payroll information is permanent. All the police mm -hmm. uh, files are mm -hmm. permanent in hard copy. So there's going to come a point where we're doing okay right now, but there is going to be a point where we're not. We're just going to run out of room up there in the attic. And I just want to no, put it out there. You. And um, you know if. I don't, I'm not sure where we can look at different options, but um, the electronic options are not real, really inexpensive to do with the files that we, you know, converting the files that we have would be very expensive. Um, and then you've got the where do you store those electronic files off site, you know, how do you back them up, you know, and all of those things. And then access when you need to. To look something up, you get a, a records request or something like that. What do you do? Um, so even with our more advanced systems, um, uh, we still have a lot of paper uh, related, especially to the police records, that uh, mm -hmm. that we have to keep on hand. Um, and I just 
it's becoming more and more difficult. Got any room over in the public? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because no, it's all open. The, yeah. the problem over there is it's all open. Um, yeah. You know, there isn't anything enclosed, and that's that's uh, part of it. I thought the second floor was... Uh, well, it, no, it's a mezzanine, but it's open to the garage oh, I got down you. below. Right here, so mm -hmm. it's not very clean, and I wouldn't want to put anything over there. Um, so it's just something that that uh, we're noticing it becoming more and more difficult. Okay. Well, okay. there's... Um, it, does Iron Mountain do this storage and that kind of thing, or you have to keep you have to keep this stuff on site? Well, we don't. I mean, there's some of it that we could store off site, um, but that would that would get, I think, expensive <coughs> in renting space. You mean to put to put stuff? Yeah, but I mean, there are companies that are in the business of there storing are companies, stuff. There companies. Yeah, there, there Iron are Mountain people in the, the, one that in came the to business mind. of scanning. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to go electronic, of scanning your documents, storing them for you. But I, yeah. I do appreciate there are, in many cases, the government does not accept electronic records. Mm -hmm. They only accept the original paper. Right. Um, I don't know if they're changing and there or are not. Some, that well, there the are case. some right to know cases that are being adjudicated right now right. as to how do you um, produce electronic records, like if they're off-site or stored. Mm -hmm. Well, um, electronic yeah. records, if somebody does them correctly, should be very easy to re You know, it depends. If they digitize them, right. you should be able to get instant access to anything you want. But uh, but if they microfiche them, yeah, then yeah. it's like paper filing. Right. Then you gotta they gotta you gotta, you gotta catalog them and index yeah. them and yeah. everything else. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it was just something that came up out of our work last week, and I just think it's something that. You know, when we're talking about I, capital, I don't think she's exactly in this we, business, but we should talk to Cheryl Moak. I think she okay. does this for medical records for doctors' offices mm -hmm. out okay. of her home. Now, I don't know if she's actually just scanning them, or whether she's in the business of simply applying. You know, taking mm -hmm. doctors' records and using that to bill insurance companies. I don't, she's in one of those two businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Either maintaining files and copies of all these records. Uh, but she probably knows. <laughs> okay. Well, um, talk to her. So if you see her, talk to her. Yeah. Ask her about your problem and see yeah. if she's got any recommendations. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Uh, calendar review. North Country Economic Development Council meeting. I got it. Yeah. You, on my calendar. It's on your calendar. Okay. Good. And I've started going down through those questions. Um, I'm probably two-thirds of the way done. I will email you some thoughts that right. I have on each one of those. He, he um, understands that we're speaking only on behalf of the individuals here. That at, this at, does not at, represent in any way a consensus of the town. That's right. Okay. I mean, but he wants to take the experience that the board has with... Right. The area and, that I'm most interested in, mm -hmm. and maybe they could help us with this, is is the issue of tax incentives to encourage investment yep. uh, as to what's possible or what we could do yep. is an area that I, I think that as we go down the road we're going to have to take a look at it. Yep. You know? That's that tax increment financing and well, there's, I, there's I, you know, I things. mean the whole gamut. Yep. I, I'm not mm -hmm. sure, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't know what possibilities exist Right. But I, I do think to encourage someone to make a major investment, mm -hmm. you know, because everything, I mean, in reality, it gets down to is somebody, can we find somebody who's willing to make a major investment to, in the mountain? Sure. And if, and, and, our, and how could we help that be a little bit easier? Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, the Ice Arena capital repair request. You have, you have, yeah, uh, I read your shows. memo. Yeah, so they need a they need what are the, these compressors wear out or? Uh, yeah, they yeah. there's uh, these are the four cylinder compressors. Um, they've repaired. I think just before we uh, entered the lease agreement, we repaired the six cylinder right uh, compressors, um, and we're 
And what are we doing now? Refurbishing these or buying yeah, new ones? There's, um, no, refurbishing the existing ones. Okay. Um, and there's a, there's a list of, of the actual work that, uh, that they'll I, be doing. I have no argument here. about that. Yeah. Uh, you went back and looked at the original lease document we signed. You think this is within yes. the spirit of what we agreed to pay? Yes. But I don't have any problem. Uh, do we need to make a note for next year's budget to do something with the yes, some money right back here. Account. Yes, we, we would Put some need money to. Back how, much, back. how much are we going to spend here? Uh, we're, well, I, I'm asking for authority up to 46000 out of the 131 that we have on okay. hand. Would you like to make a motion? Though? I'll make a motion to give Mark the authority to spend up to 46000 I'll second. From the, what fund is that? Uh, it's the hockey uh, arena or the ice arena capital repair account. Cap ice arena capital repair account. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And Mike, just, um, I forgot to mention, Mike let me know before he left that he was okay with this too. I went over it with him. Yeah, the exterior of the ice arena is looking a little shabby. Okay. Do you want me to talk to him about it? Well, is that something that falls to there? Well, it That's depends on what he's got to do. If he just has to paint it, that's one thing. If there are repairs to it, mm. then it would Mostly be Mostly I was us. noticing it looked like it needed a paint job. Oh, it's okay. It's beginning yeah. to get yeah. to that point. Paint, I think, is them. And did you do painting on there before? No. You, you haven't. It hasn't been done. It hasn't been done for several years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's been a while. Okay. Adding credit cards to the return check policy. Yeah, we... We won't uh, be charged a fee by the bank necessarily, but we do have our EB to Gov, our, our outside vendor. Um, if they were to charge us a fee because something happened, I, you know, I think it's highly unlikely, but I think we, we should be covered in the event that we get charged something that we have the ability to, to you know, levy a fee on on someone who... We take only credit cards, right? Or do we also accept debit cards? We accept debit cards also. We also accept yeah. debit cards. Yeah. Okay. It's just that we're, in going down through the fees, um, Judy noticed that, you know, we had the checks covered, but we, when we instituted the credit cards, we never added them to the list. Yeah, I, I mean, is the, is it, does a credit card company actually charge you a fee if, if somebody submits a card that's well, not, I, that doesn't have, I mean, they just don't process it, It would right? be for a, a kickback charge. So if someone called and disputed something they saw and kicked the charges back at us, is what he's talking about because right. it would right. be it would be declined on it the spot. It would be declined on the spot, so that's otherwise. Yeah. Right. So this would be the case where somebody changes their mind and decides not to pay us after they agreed to that's pay right. us, or somebody has fraudulently used the card, and somebody disputes the charge, and it gets kicked back. It's a highly unlikely. It's factor. highly unlikely, <laughs> but it could. It does happen. happen? Yeah. Yeah, I have no problem with making some statement that in the event that we end up with some unusual fee, okay, you know that we're going to charge you that fee. Right. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, if someone's card is declined, they just leave, and there's no harm, no foul. So okay. I'm not worried about that. Uh -huh. So this would make it the same as if it would the make check it the bounces. same as if the check bounced. So we're not going to specify the amount. We're just going to say whatever no, the penalty $10. amount is. I, well, we can you do see, it way. well, you see the example you raised, which is that somebody calls and then says, "Well, I'm disputing the charge." So we're sitting here now with the dis with with the bill. Uh, you know, what we need to do is get that money, the original money. Right. Which right, is but, the same as the, a check. The original money is the same as a check. We would send an invoice to the person for the amount right. of the of the check. But charge. do they also add but a fee wanted, on top that's of that? What, that's what we're talking about oh. because we have that process of that she's going to have to go through of preparing the invoice and tracking 
and collecting and all of that. Okay. That's what this $10 thing all right. yeah. would okay. cover. So it, okay. it's not intended to cover the fact no. that somebody didn't pay the bill. No, no, no. no. Right. We're we're gonna we're gonna bill them okay. separate. All no, right. because even the check that that ten dollar fee that we charge them if a check bounces, right. that's the that's the fee the bank charges us. Right. Right. And then we go after the right. original right. amount of money. Right. Absolutely. Right. Okay. 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 So I'm all right. So next time we will have it under old business. We'll conduct sure. a public hearing and then make the change. Okay. Okay. Um, you wanted to talk about uh, town manager goals and objectives? I, I wanted to add to the list. I, I didn't, I didn't you. realize that, I didn't want you to, to go make one up. Well, no, but I, I realized I don't think we've done one. No, you have not. Yeah, and I thought it would be worthwhile to, yeah. to, to talk can, about. Can we do one thing before so I yeah. can get Jim out of sure. here? Sure. Oh, okay. I just, um, I, yeah, I can we, can, yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I don't know if you saw on the news this morning, but there's been another round of media attention with Flint, Michigan. Yeah, I'm um, in the lead. With the lead and copper thing. So yeah, I, while we're on camera, I want to get it on the record All here. Right. And I want to just quickly go over the process that we have historically followed and what we are doing right now. Because this will give you some information, too, in case you're asked. Okay. Go ahead. Just, okay. So I have, I have checked with Robbie and with Bill Cheney. Bill has all of the history, 30 plus years with the town. All of our town owned portions of the system are lead free. All of our pipe, everything, all the transmission mains, all of our equipment in our, in our pump houses, everything, all of that is lead free up to the shutoff, the last shutoff before the service connection from the building to the now, water. When you say lead free, you, yes. you're, you're, are, you're, you're excluding solder. No, everything. There is you're no saying, solder, there is no lead solder, there is nothing. You, All of it. Your knowledge is that no, there was no lead solder which you used anywhere in that solder. system. That's our correct. joints aren't soldered. Yes. Okay. So we, we have We're no, all mechanical. That's right. All we right. have no lead in the town owned portions of the system. Okay. Um, the town has had an active corrosion control program since the early 1980s. So we have been adding potash to our water when the pH gets to 6 or I mean, it comes, it's naturally occurring between six and six and a half, Bill said. Okay. Um, we add potash and we adjust it back up to a pH of eight, which prevents corrosion in the system. And we've been doing that for a long time. We test quarterly for lead, and, or twice a year, twice a year for lead and copper. Um, we have 20 properties that are on our list of available properties to do that testing. Usually we test 10 of those 20 properties each round, okay? If the property is an occupied full-time resident of the town, they're given a collection bottle and they're instructed to not use their water for six hours, so like overnight, right? And then to take the sample before they use their system in any way, all right? If it is a property with an absent property owner, in the past, we have coordinated with property management, gone in the day before and run the water in that property for several hours and then turn the water off and let it sit for at least six hours usually more, and then gone in and taken a sample. And we are, the state is okay with that. What they don't want is they don't want us using, they want at least that six hour period of non-use prior to the sample being taken for it to be a valid sample, okay? 
Um, and then um, our plan, I've, I've talked to Robbie, we are going to come up with a description of uh, our testing procedures and basically all of this information. And we're going to put a special insert into the consumer confidence report that goes out by July 1st um, each year. Uh, and we will highlight uh, the lead and copper testing that we do. Okay. Okay. Now, now, have we actually tested the water as it comes out of the wellhead and, si and, and said there is no lead in that water? I mean, I don't know. Is, is, um, is it possible to get lead leaching into a well? Uh, I, I don't know. I, look, typically, I, naturally? Yeah. No. Okay. Not that I'm aware. Yeah, I, uh, we do test the water as it comes out of the well, but I don't know if lead is one of the items that we okay. test for. Right, so we're we reasonably convinced that we don't have a well problem. No, no. We, we and, and just so we're on this record, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I believe we failed this test once, right? We failed it the last, uh, yeah. the last time we tested. Last yes. time we tested it, and mm -hmm. our, there was and our rationale was the water was sitting in the line too long. That's correct. It, it, it contact was time. it was contact time, and it was it was a a house that did not have uh, had not had a resident in it. I think they told us either four or six months prior there had been nobody in the house. Did we have to retest that house? And then we retested the house. We ran the water in the house, right. and then we retested it, and it came back okay came back. So the very, one that okay. we failed, we hadn't run the water before we did that? We did not because now we've lost the major property management company. There are some properties we cannot get into. <laughs> hmm. Prior to, mm -hmm. to run it and then and, and we, part of this flyer that I want to put out when, with the when CCR. They, you, they talked to, in the case of Flint where they talked about treating the water to minimize corrosion and the leaching of lead. Mm -hmm. Is that all they're doing? Is they're talking about anything potash, potash to adjust the pH? Well, they adjust the pH some chemical. Yeah, some method yeah. of adjusting the pH. That's yeah. it. That's it. It's no secret chemical. It right? is not. No. 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 All right. Um, it, the other thing about this flyer is that we're going to notify property owners that if they are away from their units or their homes for extended periods of time, that when they come back, the right. best thing to do is run every every faucet, <coughs> everything, you know, for at least a couple of hours, run so clear that system and get that water that's had that contact time. If there is lead solder in their house or whatever, um, then well, we know, they can help clear it We out. basically know that anything built before a certain date Yes. Has got lead solder. You know, and after Probably. a certain date That's right. doesn't. That's well, right. it's a chance right, before that date. What's 1980 the date? So if your unit was built after 1980, you probably have nothing to worry about. That's correct. If your uh, unit, what, so you just say that. If well, your unit was built. What? They totally banned it, right. I think, in the mid 90s. Well, whatever the date totally is. Banned. Whatever the date is. I think, they, they totally I think there banned was a reduction it. in the uh, percentage. Go go to go to the safest date. So go to the mid nineties, yeah. whatever that right. date is, yeah. and basically said if your house is built after that, you have no concern. Exactly. If your house is built before that, there's a possibility yeah. that if you you know if the water mm -hmm. sits in your pipes for a long time, that, that it could leach from mm -hmm. the solder. It could. Um, uh, yeah, and I think the the best way for people to deal with this is just to flush. flush. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it's really the only way to tell. Um, okay. But I, you know, I just wanted to make it clear because I saw that article today and I said, you know. Yeah, no, it's sooner or later somebody's going to bring it up. Asking. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay. okay. Good. Um, uh, before we get out, are you going to talk about the, I saw that in your write-up, something about a DES, that you're thinking about a grant? Yes. 
It's, it's listed under old oh, business. Oh, it's under yeah. old business. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, then we'll go on. So the, oh, okay. So <laughs> what do you want? Uh, whatever you want to do. You want to do town manager goals and objectives? Or right. Should we? Proceed down the agenda and then get to that. Yeah. We'll okay. Just save so it for let's uh, for the uh, our town grant update. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Tiffany has called the community development finance authority um, at the state. Um, there, there is grant money available under what they deem their emergency program um, for anything that can. Um, cause potential harm to health and safety of the community. Um, this so is the a DM, state grant. These are, this is a state grant under okay. the Community Development Block Grant Program. All right. Um, so there, the problem with these with these programs is they have to um, give some benefit to low moderate income people. We have investigated this in the past and we don't qualify uh, because of our per capita income. Right. Right. However, Tiffany pointed out to them that there is a potential impact on the surrounding communities if we were, say, to lose Corcoran's Pond and Town Square closed or it caused the ski area to scale back or close or whatever, um, there could be an impact on Campton, Thornton, Plymouth, and those are low mm -hmm. moderate income communities. So we would write this grant and use that, use the region rather than just the town of Waterville Valley as the affected community. These are the same people that just turned this town for signs, but it's a different no, pocket? No, this is, no, this is completely different. This is federal money that comes to the state in a block grant. So they give the state of New Hampshire X millions of dollars. Oh, okay. The State Community Development Finance Authority then administers and disperses that money in smaller grants to the communities. We in my prior towns, I, I used a community development block grant to build a, um, uh, a um, child care center for the town of Farmington. So there was, you know, there are, it can be used for many different things. Um, but under this emergency program, the dam really does seem to... Possible. Be a possible one of the, one of the things so, that I do like now, and we haven't heard back from the damn people. I hope we never hear back. From right. Them. But in case we do, right. one of the things might be interesting to say is, look, we've got our hundred grand, and right. we're and you know, and we wouldn't be opposed if we can get one of these community development block grants to putting our hundred in, getting a little money from that, and then voila, we think we may have to, and, and uh, because getting these grants approved takes forever. <laughs> well, the, the nice thing about these are they're rolling. You don't have to wait. You make the application, and it's first come, first serve. If there's money uh, left in that year and they approve your project, you get the money right then. So there's no, there's no lengthy evaluation. Right. Um, but I, I agree, Bill, that's exactly what we should do because there is no grant, there is no match, community match, required under the CDBG program. However, your application is stronger if you are matching. Well, so, I think, I think to, to say that, you know, look, we, we've got, yeah. you know, we've got this problem and it, it really does affect the people of Campton. I don't know about Thornton, right. but the dilemma right. is if the dam actually were to fail, mm -hmm. the only people are going to get hurt are people who live along the river, not right. not anybody in this town. I right. mean, we're we're not going to get all that right. hurt. Right. But um, yeah, I I have no problem putting our money up. You know, we say, look, we our problem is we just being able to raise enough money, right, to to do this. So right, okay. 
Well, I'll keep working yeah. towards right. it. We'll have this meeting on the morning of May 11th, and then uh, we'll come in to the meeting that day and okay. tell you what okay. we think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any correspondence, Mark? I have no correspondence okay. right now. Oh, I did want to let you know, correspondence-wise, that we have sent out the letters to the commercial properties. So if they talk to you and there are any concerns, just they can talk to Judy or mm -hmm. myself, and uh, and we can help walk them through it. Right. Um, but they got the three quarters of. Mm -hmm you know, information, and um, so I haven't heard anything back. It's been a couple of days. Just so today. I'm, just today, uh, Leslie yeah. Rose Warren talked to Judy about it. Mm -hmm. um, but we cleared up a misconception that Leslie had, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, goals and objectives, Mark? Yeah. Um, you know, just reading these, I mean, on here are the, the three things that I was most interested in making sure that we kept the focus on. Okay. So, I mean, one is, uh, obviously, we won't have to talk anymore about the well. Right, number one. Um, yeah. We've got to get the well done. Mm -hmm. um, recycling, you know, I, I think we, we, we just need, it's not so much the recycling rates, we just need to, I'm just never happy with, the, with what we've got. Okay. And uh, and the dam, Corcoran's dam. Okay. I mean, we need to we need to continue to to try to get that off the list. Are uh, the three things that I more than any uh, felt that we needed to. Okay. I mean, I don't have a problem with these other items. Sure. I mean, but do we have something going on on a regular basis to let our non-resident taxpayers know what's going on? Um, we've been putting information in our, mostly in our quarterly water and sewer bills. Mm -hmm. um, we're by law not supposed to put anything in with the tax bills. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that's been the major uh, way of reaching out. The other thing, we're, we're getting good feedback even from people off of the website. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy that people are actually using it. We get oh. several calls a week mm -hmm. um, with people with questions of something they saw there mm -hmm. or, you know, a lot of people are taking advantage of the electronic payments more than I thought. Oh, and we're really good at if somebody has a question about their bill or about any of that, if they're in front of a computer, we right then walk them right through on our web page yeah. how they can, you know, solve that problem of seeing what they have mm -hmm. and they seem to like it it's it's yeah so helpful so so when you um, start up the blog yeah the town I do want to start that, okay yes. that you're gonna start yeah um, you know I again I think it's important maybe in the water sewer bill or that mm -hmm. kind of thing that you put something out that says Absolutely. hey um, this is now available as an additional information right. source. And oh, by the way, have you been to the website recently, right. et cetera? Because, right. you know, that's probably how most of yeah, these people... Yeah, because it's on the website that you can sign up to have you, to have these, these messages sent yep. to you, right? Yep. Notifications mm -hmm. sent yep. to you. So we ought to just put in there, you know, sure. if you'd like more information about the town, be sure to go onto our website, sign up, and you can get... Yeah. You know, make sure your email address is in there and we'll right. send you additional information as time yeah. goes on. And the nice thing about the blog is I can make it as short or as long as I want. And, mm -hmm. you know, just people like, we can do the link mm -hmm. from the website to mm -hmm. the blog and mm -hmm. just let them read. And if mm -hmm. I'm able to get one or two things up there a week, it's just going to be that much better. Okay. No, no, I, in fact, I was... I, it, it, just saw a thing, I guess, that um, the, the Britons are thinking of, they're, they're, they, they don't want to be as involved in the wigwag as they've been. Mm -hmm. they're, they're looking for someone to take that. It'd be a shame if, if it, mm -hmm. you know, if it, we don't, can't keep it going. Yeah, I, I, that's really a critical piece of the town. That I agree. It I is, that's yeah. That's something so we we'll, really need to encourage. So somebody. we just have to keep our eye on it, make sure that yeah. we'll have to encourage somebody to, to, I know Brenda's helping them now. She's doing all the right. back office stuff, but right. I think they were looking for someone to, to actually Boy, take on the that. editor role. Yeah. You know, if we were to lose that, that would be bad. 
Well, it can't go on forever, and yeah. people do. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how they've weathered the storm this long, quite frankly. 50 years? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's yeoman service. That's a lot of work, I'm guessing, to write all those articles. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a, yeah. hopefully a labor of love. Right. Okay. Doesn't look All like right. we have yeah. anyone no, else for... No, I think for the other things are fine. Privilege of the floor, board, concerns, and directives. Um, oh, just a note. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether you heard that the the ZBA has recruited Barry Fish to, to be an alternate. He's agreed to do it. They're happy with him. Yeah, we... Didn't we vote on that? Well, that was that my was question. Prior. You I know, somebody did. asked me, did we authorize him? And I said, yeah, I don't know. If we didn't, I'm, pretty sure I'm gonna make. Did. I'll just to be yeah. sure. I'll make a motion okay. to to appoint Barry Fish as the as an alternate member of the ZBA. I'll second that. And if it's in twice, ignore it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't serve as an alternate twice. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Board um, concerns and directives. I just uh, raised the thing I raised before the meeting. I was asking about whether there was funding in our budget for the town celebration of the yes. 50th. There is? No, I don't know. No, there, there isn't not. right now. But no, but we'll right find now. some. We'll, I, yeah. Well, I don't know what they're thinking of doing. No, I, d I yeah. don't know either. And they haven't done anything. Yeah. <laughs> Any <laughs> idea if you want to know, if you want the inside story. <laughs> but I, I believe we are going to invite them. And I think that's what you, we should invite them. Uh, I think uh, um, Mike is going to invite them to a selectman's meeting. Yes. Oh to come and tell us some thoughts. Yeah. Um, I, I think they're thinking of kind of like what we did for the library. You know, was they, they think people here like to eat and drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, they do. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good to me. I like it. <laughs> Mike right. wanted to have a parade, I think. Right, yeah. you know. There should okay. be a parade. And I think, too, the mountain is planning some stuff over this coming uh, 16, 17 season, like yeah. to kind of commemorate huh. this. And I, I'll talk to Tim Smith. It would probably be good to have him attend the who, same meeting. Who actually did it? Was it corporate? Who did what? Change the name. The state. Uh, the, I know the state, but who, oh, the, who, who actually went and applied? You know, the board of the selectmen. idea. The act so that would have been Corbin. He would have been chairman then. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But it's signed by Kevin Morse and I forget who the other person was at the time. Okay, and I'll uh, Tim Smith. Okay. Uh, can you turn that off and unplug? The so camera? I will let them know. I'll let the committee know that. Uh, so we're we'll adjourn. Yes, we'll adjourn at right. uh, four twenty-two.